Thank you very much, Steve, for the introduction. And uh, as Steve said, we are very excited to be showcasing this for you today. Um, so we're going to be running through our application, giving you an understanding exactly how this is going to work uh, for your company and your agent. Uh, as Steve said, I encourage that you do utilize the chat function as we run through this today. Uh, I will definitely do my best to be looking at those questions as we run through those, either answering during our presentation or definitely be answering them at the very end. Uh, so what we're going to do now is really just dive right into this. So what we're looking at here is our login screen for ZipForm Plus, uh, located at www.zipformplus.com. Uh, so simply what they'll do is you'll plug in a username and a password. The way the agents will be setting their passwords, though, is they're simply going to click on the Forgot Password icon. And we did do a roster import for the agents, so their username is going to be their email address. So all they'll need to do is plug in their email address and then click on send. The system at that point in time will send them a, a reset password and they will set their own passwords for their account at that time. So again, simply coming in, plugging in their, um, clicking on forgot password, and then resetting their password. So it's very, very easy. You also have the ability now to just simply click on sign in. Once they log into the application, they're going to be brought to a transaction page. This is where all the transactions are going to reside, anything that's being worked on or worked on in the past, they will be able to find on this screen. You'll see right now that we're looking at this in a list view. So you can see we're getting some information about who the owner is, a unique transaction ID, a closing date if it's there, different statuses, information about the property, when it was modified, created, and our retention policy. So our retention policy is really based upon uh, how long you're required to hold that transaction for uh, per your state. So if it's five years, six years, seven years, um, it's how long we're going to hold that transaction for you inside the application. If you want to switch to a list, a tile view, all you have to do is simply click on the icon. This will take you to a, uh, a tile view, and so it's really a personal preference between your viewing styles. There's the ability to sort transactions out either by a date modified, a transaction name, even a closing date if you want to. And there's different filters for them as well. So they have the option to go ahead and maybe say, I'll only want to look at like the active and pending and then save that filter. So that way when they come into the application, it's a clean list of the transactions that they're currently working on. Okay. There is a search box, so anytime you're looking for a transaction, it's an instant search functionality. So if I type in the reload name, it will go ahead and bring up any transaction that contains that information. All of our search functionalities are instant as you type. From an administrative function, uh, the location administrators, the broker admins of the company, which we will talk about a little bit more, there is a drop down here. This allows you to go ahead and select an office or a user. So I can go ahead and click on this drop down and look at the agents either within the company or I can break it down to a particular office location. So if you're set up as a location admin for your office, you will be able to see the agents that are under your location only. So you'll be able to click that drop down and look at the trade actions or the agents within that particular office location. Okay. <clears throat> We do have a toolbar that will navigate with you as you move across the application. Some tools will come and go depending on where you're at. The first icon here is our forms icon. This lets you get in, grab a form, not necessarily having to name the transaction at that time. There is the ability to create a new transaction, which we are going to do here very shortly. Um, we do have a delete function. It's controllable at the company level or an office level. So you can choose upon what type of deletion rights you want to give. Understanding that you do use this with Skyslope, so I think allowing a delete function here you know, makes sense in case an agent made a mistake. So it allows them some flexibility on the zip form side. Uh, we do also make it easy to import and export files. So it's not, you know, if you need to export a file, all you have to do is click on it, and you can choose a file or multiple files, and then export them out. The nice thing about this, though, is in case maybe years down the road, if it's transaction, maybe you have to relist, you do have the ability to import this file directly into the transaction, and it'll actually become a fully workable transaction again. Clauses and lookup manager. So clauses might be your additional stipulations 
the company is going to have the ability to create global clauses or stipulations that they want to utilize. Or if you're an OA, you can actually create your own office clauses as well so that only the agents within that office will be the ones that could utilize those stipulations. The last tool we'll talk about on the toolbar up here is our mortgage calculator. So if you click on this calculator, it'll give you some general sense of what a particular property could cost a client. So maybe we're looking at $275,000, and it's an interest rate of um, you know, 4%, and the loan term is 30 years or 360 months. So once you calculate this out, it'll give you a general sense of what a particular property could cost your client. You can throw in some property taxes. Maybe they're $3,500 for the year. At that point in time, you can recalculate it and get a good general sense of this is even in their mark, in their range to be looking at. There's two different options for the amortization table. You choose your first payment date, decide if it's tax or CSV. So then at that point in time, I can display it as a table and give the whole amortization schedule to my clients. So again, they can see exactly what they're paying out for the next 30 years. Okay, you can print this off and give it to them so the agents would have that option to do that or they can go back and display it as a CSV file and then email it to them that way as well. Each transaction does have a menu drop down either in the right hand corner of the tile or if you're in the list view, it'll be to the right hand corner over here. Clicking that drop down will give you some additional transaction details and then some menu options. Again, the ability to open up a transaction. There's also the ability to view edit the details. So I can maybe change a name of a transaction if I want to. I can change a listing to a purchase if it goes that way. So you have the ability to, you know, edit and update the details if you want to. There's also going back to the drop down, the ability to go ahead and make a copy of a transaction as well. So say a you're working with a set of buyers and those set of buyers just happen to fall through. So what you can do is make a copy, maybe change this to like an inactive or a fell through and push it over into Sky Soap. Um, but this way you don't have to start from scratch if you're making a copy. It will keep all the data and then you can go in and make the minor changes for that particular type of transaction. Before we get into creating a new transaction, I'm going to take a second here to talk about a template because the, Steve has gone through and actually created some templates for the company. So what I'm going to explain to you on this particular point is that the company is going to have global templates that are going to be utilized throughout the, um, throughout the company. And these are global. So when creating these templates, they are set at a global level, meaning that everyone in the entire company does have the ability to utilize this particular type of template. If you're a location admin, you will have the right to your own location-specific templates as well so that these will only be available to your agents within your office. So there's going to be a standardized global level, and then the office can kind of add and you know, build upon the global template that the company has set forward. So you can see that there's going to be residential sale templates, residential listing templates. So these are already created within the company application for your agent. So let's go back to our transaction page and start putting all this together. So we're simply going to click on New, and we're going to give our transaction today. So actually today we're excited because I do have some buyers. So we're going to plug in the name of a transaction, like 2858 uh, Riva Road. It's going to be a purchase residential transaction. And before I click on Save, there's a couple things that I can do. Uh, the first thing is that I'm a very visual person, so maybe I want to add a photo of the property, right? So we're going to click on here, we're going to bring a picture of this property into the application. And also see here below that we have the ability to apply templates. So I can go ahead and click on the drop down and look at the global templates that the, the company has given to me. So since this is a residential purchase, I'm going to look for my residential sale. And we're going to go ahead and click on Save. So now the system is going to go ahead and pull in all the forms that they want to utilize for a residential purchase transaction. So again, it's kind of setting the bar for the agent so they don't have to go look for the forms from the library. But that's okay if they need to because the library is easily accessible right here in the right-hand side. You will have access to multiple libraries based upon the area. So like you'll have access to the Berkshire Hathaway Library. You'll have access to the Garden State 
the New Jersey Association of Realtor Library as well. If you find a form you're looking for, all you have to do is simply click on the form. It will bring that form directly into the transaction, so it's very easy to add a form in. There's also the ability to sort these forms out, either alphabetical or form number. So if you're a person that would rather search for a form by the number, like 121, you can do it that way as well. There is also an option to look at the categorize view. So we do work with the company and the associations to help us categorize these documents into what type of transaction they belong into. So you can see here there's like the back office and then there's purchase forms. So I can actually open up the purchase folder and look at the forms that the association has classified as purchase documents. So at that point in time all I need to do is look for additional form and then add that form directly into the transaction. So we make it very easy to do so. There's also the ability to go ahead and click on the search box and we can go ahead and type in a, a name of a form that we're looking for. So maybe we're looking for a lead-based paint form, right? So if I type in the word lead, you can see now that the application actually drawed up all the forms that contain the word lead. So there's two different options here. And let's just say I'm not still sure on which particular form that I need to utilize. There is a menu drop down on the form giving you the ability to add the form to the transaction this way. You can print a sample form which will watermark sample across the face of the document, but ultimately I can do a form preview and see this form prior to pulling it into the transaction. So I can scroll through here and make sure, okay, this is a form that I need to have. I can add the form to the transaction this way. Uh, again, print the form out and simply if it's not the right form, I can close out and then open this tab because they do open and close and then continue on looking for another form. And I can simply click on it to bring the form into the transaction that way as well. Okay. So now that we've brought in or drawn in some additional forms into our transaction, there is definitely multiple ways to bring a form uh, or parties into a transaction as well. We're definitely going to cover all these for you. Um, so there is the ability, the first way is that you'll have a cover sheet inside of the transaction. Um, so you can go into this cover sheet and fill out the information here if you wanted to for your buyers. You can go into a contract of sale and fill out the information here as well. So whatever you want. But the way I'm going to show you is that we actually have a parties tab working from left to right. So we can see here we have our parties tab and what we're going to do is click on the parties tab and we're going to click on new. So at that point in time, you're going to have the ability to click a drop down and we're going to select buyer one. Now I can fill out all the information for the buyer here. But the reason why I'm saying come here is because when you're filling out the information for the buyer, there's a possibility or a very good possibility that a buyer might put offers on two or three different homes before they get an accepted offer. Or they go all the way to the appraisal and the appraisal just happens to kill the deal. So then what you can do is save this person as a contact after the first time you filled them out and then add them into the built-in address book that Zip Form has to offer. So once you do that, you can click on Add Contact and we can go to our address book and look at the company contacts that we have inside our application. Um, you can have your own personal contacts. The locations can have their own contacts per the location and then the company can actually have brokerage-wide contacts as well. So you, you'll be able to either add a buyer from your address book or we can simply click on the drop down here and utilize a, a service that we have cloud integrations with Google and Yahoo and Office Microsoft 365 and you can pull your contacts from any one of those applications as well. Since we're going to just simply pull from our Ziplodges contacts, say we go ahead and bring in um, Mr. Chris Brown here. And we're going to add him into our transaction. I'm going to change the email address to my name. So he's going to be, um, so we're going to click on save. So now Chris is easily brought into the transaction. We can do that one more time. We can select on buyer two this time. We can again fill out the information for the buyer or go back to the drop down and go to our address book and maybe bring in Susan. Okay, so there we have buyer one and two. And you can see it's very easy to bring them into a transaction. Okay.
We also now have the ability to go to the property tab and we can start filling out all the information for the property here. So we'll just plug in some information like a street address. You'll notice now after you use the application more and more, the system will generate lookup fields. And the system is going to simply remember what you typed in in the past, right? So you can either type, it, type in a fresh you know, email uh, address like 2858 Weaver Road. Or we can go ahead and click on a township, start bringing in some information this way as well. So it's very easy to start filling out a transaction as it moves across. And this data will also all flow directly back to a transaction form or a cover sheet. So we'll simply click on Save. We'll go to our documents. And let's go to our cover sheet here. And you're going to see here that um, information is being pulled in. We have the information from the property information getting prop populated as well. And again, all this information will be pulled into uh, any form you pull into a transaction. Okay. All right, let's go back to our uh, documents tab here. Now let's talk about some ability if you need to bring in any outside documents into a transaction. Okay, and there's multiple ways to do this. The most common way a user will probably bring in a document is simply to go ahead and click on the Add Document icon. So I can click up here and we can browse for a file or we can add from an external source like Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, and OneDrive. Uh, but again, just simply browsing off the computer. So we can click up here and we can browse for a file like go to our zip form demo folder here and bring in like a home inspection report into the application, right? So we make it very easy to get an outside document into this transaction as well. You can take that one step folder and maybe add a folder into this transaction. So we'll go ahead and click on the folder name like uh, pics of prop or pictures of the property. So we'll click on OK and we can click on the folder here and add some external documents again like pictures. So maybe I'm a very visual person, like I said. I want to bring in like the back, the garage, the front of the house. So we're going to go ahead and bring those pictures directly into the application so that way they're stored with this as well. And then when you're ready to send anything over to Skyflow if you can. There also is a menu drop down that allows us to use a fax cover sheet to fax into the application if you need to. Right? So you can see that there's barcodes at the top and the bottom and the ability to send it to a phone number and there's directions and then even the ability to send it as a, through a scanner as an email attachment. Right? So again, some flexibility there for you there. But another option is the ability to email to the transaction. So there is a unique email address that we will generate for each transaction. You can use this email address to send documents directly into this transaction if you wanted to. So say you received an email and you wanted to put it in a zip form and send it out for signature, you could. Um, but the nice thing about our email function is that, of course, it's going to do all the attached documents, but it will also store a conversation of the email as well. So we pull in the documents and store a copy of the conversation. So again, very easy to get documents into a transaction, either by emailing, faxing, or even uploading off a computer. As we work across this toolbar here, uh, we do have the ability to uh, delete documents again, controllable. You have the option to print out of the application, so I can choose to print the forms and even choose a drop down to print different pages if I want to. There is the ability to send directly out of the application as well. So I can choose a form I want to print or outside documents. I can drag and drop in any particular order that I like. I can email or fax directly out of the application. So you have full control over what, how you want to get it to your client. Anytime you see a blue business card, it means you can access your transactional parties, right? So I can either add from the transaction or access from the transaction book as well. You can copy yourself, and then you also have the ability to send it out as either a single PDF or send it out as several PDFs and even attach a fax cover sheet from here as well. You can also notice down here below that you can set up your own taglines within your profile, so that way when it goes out, it's more personable to you. All right? So emailing and faxing out of the application is definitely very easy. Okay. So let's go and close out of here now.
and now we're while we're on the topic of you know communicating with the client and and getting things into their hands to review and look at, uh, there is a service up here called Zip Consult, and this is included with all of our applications. So we're going to click on Zip Consult. And what this is, is that it's an online meeting service. So I can either plug in a first name and a last name and an email address, and I can add them in as a meeting participant. Or again, I have this ability to access the address book and go ahead and pull this person in from my address book, right? So I can choose Chris, I want to add them in, and maybe even choose Susan. And I can go ahead and meet now with them. And what it's going to allow me to do is have this very interactive experience with my clients without having to drive across town to do so. So what I can do at this point in time is go into zip form and share my screen with my client. I can open up the contract to sale and we can fill this con we can go over this contract together, show them what this means, what that means, where they're going to be signing, and really again have this interactive experience without having to drive across town to do so. Um, but you're not just limited to what's in zip form. You can share it to whatever you want, items off the MLS, items off your company website, maybe something out of SkySlope. So that service allows the agent to share their screen with their client and really bring back, um, bring back that uh, interactive experience um, with their client, just an additional service you can offer um, when you're working on a transaction with somebody. And again, that is included with all of our accounts. While we're on the topic of looking at and working out on a transaction, I'm going to take a second here to talk about some form filling functionalities. Obviously, when you're filling out a form, data will flow wherever it's needed, any form involved in the transaction, right? So you have this ability to go ahead and tab through and quickly fill out information very easily. You also have the ability to take this uh, option up here called our fast fill, and you can see here that this is a 13-page sales agreement. So what I can do is click on Fast Fill, and what it will do is actually bullet point the information needed for this particular type of transaction. I can go through now and tab through and fill out all the information on this transaction, right? So I can fill out, tab through and quickly fill it out. And then um, once I'm done, you know, obviously the data will flow, and you can click on Fast Fill again. And we'll go ahead and convert that document back into its original state. Okay? There's also the ability to have a highlight. So if you want to highlight some text on the file, you can as well. So you can go ahead and click on the highlighter. There's even different drop downs to even choose different colors if you want to. So this allows you to draw some attention to a particular area on the contract. There's also the ability to use a strikeout as well in case you want to cleanly and professionally strike out any information. You can do that, so I can click on strike out. And we'll go ahead and strike out the information on the contract very easily. Right? And then you can just simply drag and drop an initial field if you wanted to. Okay? So again, if you made a mistake and you wanted to remove any of the highlight or strike out, all you have to do is simply double click. Or you can go ahead and re-highlight the text. And we'll go ahead and click on the drop down to remove that red line as well. All right, now I'll also remove it from the contract. Same with the strikeout, just simply double click to remove it if you need to. Another thing that we're going to talk about here is uh, if we click on more, is this ability to attach a photo to a transaction. Well, let's just say that we're working and there's an addendum, and this addendum has something to deal with, like, uh, like an FHA inspection, and we wanted to attach a photo, right? So what we can do is click on attach photo. And we'll click on Attach, and we're going to bring a picture of the back of the house, because maybe there's some peeling paint in the back of the house that we want to draw attention to. I can click on the back, and we can attach this photo right to our document here. You'll see Photo 1. And I can move it wherever I want. And now any time this document goes out, via email or faxing or through an e-sign, it's going to have this ability to click on, uh, say we'll email this form. This addendum now is going to have a picture to go along with it. So no matter where this amendment goes, or if it's a blank addendum, you're going to see that that photo is attached to this particular document. Right? So you can attach multiple photos to any type of document, and then when it goes out of the application, it will be included um, with it as well. 
<clears throat> okay. All right, we do have some like cell checking, not applicable, and lookup fields. Again, those are how you manage uh, the data. And there's also an activate and telecopy. What this will do is it accounts for like the less than 99% of the auto population. So if there's a possibility where it could be one or the other, activate and telecopy will go ahead and put in the data that we anticipate should go there. So that and telecopies feature uh, can also help fill in some additional fields onto your transaction. Okay, so let's go back to our documents tab here. Now let's take a second here to talk about collaboration. Say you want to go ahead and you're working with somebody and you want to invite someone into a transaction. So what we can do here is click on collaborate. And we can simply go ahead and add a person into a transaction, either from the transaction parties or we can access from our address book. Or we can simply bring in a new person. So let's just say I'm going to bring in a person and he happens to be a lender. And it's going to be Mark Lender. And we're going to plug in his email address. And I'm going to invite Mark into this transaction. And you can invite your clients, your co-op agents, your lenders, your title companies, whoever you want, into this transaction. So we'll click on Save. And what are we going to allow Mark to do, right? So we definitely have some options here of what we can allow him to do. There is the ability to check out some forms if we want to collaborate with them that way. And it does give us the option to either let him do the history, we can allow him to add files into a transaction, and we allow him to make changes as well. Um, since it's early, I'm not going to allow Mark to make any changes to these forms. And really, all I'm going to share with him is like a cover sheet, right? So just so that way he can see you know, the people involved in the transaction. After you make your decision, what you can do at this point in time is click on Send. And we're going to invite Mark into this transaction and say, Hi, Mark. Please upload the pre-approval. So we're asking Mark to upload a document into this transaction for us. So we're simply going to click on Send now. And now an email notification is going to be sent off to Mark so that I can invite him into this transaction. So we'll go ahead and give it a second to load. And here is the email that gets received. So you can see that for one, it comes from someone, a personal email like Steve Jeanette. And it comes from that email address and it's personal to me saying, hi Mark, please upload the pre-approval letter. And what he's going to do is he can click on, click on start collaborating now. Right, and I'm going to copy this hyperlink and just take it right into Google Chrome. So here we have this link, and this is where Mark will be brought to. If he's a new user, all he will have to do is simply click on the new user, create an account. And I can choose to say that I am a mortgage company. I can plug in a username and a password and confirm my password and continue to log in. Once I establish this account, I can use this account to join any transaction that I get invited into, right? So if any other agent invites me in, I can use this same account to join any transaction. So I'm going to uh, log in with an account that I already know Mark Lender has. So mlender123, and we're simply going to log in. So it's going to take us directly into this transaction. I can see some contact information for the user up here for the agent. I can also see information about the property as well. If I want to open up the cover sheet, I can. And it's going to allow me to see information about the property, the buyers, the information down here below about the property information, right? So this allows me to see everything that's kind of going on in, inside this transaction. But again, my instructions were clear. So what I'm going to do is simply click on Add Document. And we're going to browse for a file. And we're going to go to uh, his desktop and bring in the approval letter. So let's go ahead and upload this right into the transaction for Steve. And so there the approval letter is. We close out of here. We're going to say I'm done collaborating. And we're going to say, hi, Steve. The letter is there. Thank you. All right. So we'll go ahead and simply click on send. And now notification will be sent to Steve to notify him about that I, I am done. What will happen back in the account is that uh, there will be an in-app notification saying Mark Leonard has completed editing the transaction. We can show those comments. 
and we can go directly to those documents as well. So we go, it'll refresh the transaction, and there you'll see the approval letter, which I can open up, review that file, make sure I have it, which is awesome. If it came through and it was multiple pages, um, you can see that you have any option to split a PDF as well. So let's go into this home inspection. And I can say I want to put this document and split it a few ways. I can click on the scissor. We can name this. Maybe these are disclosures. We can save that so we make it very easy to split documents out into the application. Okay, so there you'll see that a new PDF got brought in and it just brought in those two additional documents I just split out. You can also collaborate documents very easily by adding this and then just sending the invitation so that Mark Leonard will be notified that there's a new document for him to review inside his uh, collaboration account. Okay, so the next step in this transaction I think is that we're ready to go ahead and go ahead and get this thing signed, right? So we're going to be utilizing an e-sign service called Digital Link, which is provided by the New Jersey Association of Realtors, so all of your agents have access to this service. So we're going to click on e-sign, and we're going to create a signature packet. So we can choose to send out like a, you know, a home inspection report, and let's go ahead and send out like an addendum here. So it's going to be very easy for us to get signed, maybe an affiliated business. So what we're going to do then is click on Next. So I'm going to go ahead and pull our transaction party. So you're going to see here that we have uh, Chris Brown. And we're going to check off his name. Let's just say I'm going to go ahead and bring in one more person as well. So uh, we're going to bring in just uh, Karen real quick. All right. And we're going to add her as well. So I'm going to just give an example. So here we have buyer one and then seller buyer one. And it, what we can do is, like uh, Chris and Karen, say they're husband and wife, right? And we want to be able to drag and drop the two parties together. I can actually go ahead and drag them together and now create an order of one and one. The two parties can save, save uh, or have the same email address because a lot of times a family household might have that. So you can actually combine the parties. And what this tells you now is that Chris and Karen will receive the email to sign it at the same time, right? So they, uh, Chris doesn't have to wait for Karen, and Karen does not have to wait for Chris. They'll receive it. One unique to Chris, and then one is unique to Karen. Okay. So then we have a, it's very easy to combine the parties. There's also a CC list, meaning that you can carbon copy anyone on the signing that you want. So if you're busy, you're driving around, you're getting an email notification saying, "Oh, great, uh, Chris has signed the contract." The CC will automatically send the completed file over to whoever you want on the other side of the transaction or to the title or to the lender. So that's what that CC option can do. There is also the ability to set a time zone in your profile. So if you know that this transaction is going to be signed in a different area, you can go ahead and change your time zone and then it will stamp it with that particular time zone that you've chosen. So for time, I'm going to remove Karen out of the signing and just simply work with Chris. So here's our buyer. Before we click on Next, so I am going to make note of two different services you'll see here. One of them is a text message authentication. So what this will do is it will actually send a code to the client to plug in when they get into the signing. Okay? So they'll have to use that. So you do use this. It's a chargeable fee to the agent, not to the company, but it's not required. It's only there if you need it. So it's circumstantially, if you need it, it'll be there. Verification ID is a series of questions to the signer. So it's really asking you are who you say you are, and um, that way it can make people more comfortable about electronic and digital signing. So let's go ahead and click on Next. And we're going to go directly into this signing here. And what it's going to do, it's going to pull in any form that we just selected. So let's go to a document that I know is already pre-tagged. So anything that we've done is that um, we do work with the company. We work with the association to help us uh, tag these documents up. So we'll give it a second to load here. And as soon as it loads, we'll go ahead and show. Actually hit F5. Okay. 
So here's the form. So we do go through and we tag this document up. You can see here that the signing field has already been established for Chris. So he already knows where he's going to have to sign, right? Same with like the addendum. So if you go to this addenda, you'll see here the sign fields here as well. So it'll already be tagged for Chris to sign. So we've already done all that work for you. So the agent doesn't have to worry about dragging and dropping all the signature fields onto a form or having someone else do it. We've taken that responsibility in. The only documents you ever have to tag is anything you're bringing from the outside, right? So we have this home inspection report. And it was a PDF, if you remember, so it's definitely not something that we designed. But we can simply drag and drop a signature field onto this form here and then rearrange it if need be. We also have the ability to add initials on this form if you want to. You can resize very easily. And you also have the ability to add text. So if you wanted to add a field and say, like, if you're countering anything, you could say this is not going to happen. And we can apply that and make it read only. And then this way you can resize it if you want to, and they have an initial box next to it. So you have this ability to add initial signature boxes already all on the transaction. After you set and reviewed and set everything up, all you have to do at this point in time is click on send. So here below is an invitation. Uh, you can alter this email if you want to, um, but after you reviewed it or made any changes, you just simply click on send now. And it's going to be sent out to the client for them to sign. What you're looking at here is a submission review. It'll say, you know, buyer one, that he still needs to, there's registration still pending, there's still actions required. And then down here below are the documents that you sent out through the signing, right? You also see here that we have the ability to look at a history. So immediately when the transaction starts, we're going to give you a history of what's already started with the signing. One item I like to draw attention to is this drop down here under the email sent. What this allows you to do is see that, okay, the projects did send the email, and here below there's a link that you can actually copy if you want, and then send it directly to your clients, and that way you know they're going to get it. So a lot of times with automated email, sometimes it gets held up in spam, or Gmail is really good at this, is kind of holding it for hostage for a little bit, and then finally releasing it later. Uh, but you can take that link, we've given you access to it, so that at that point in time you can go ahead and send it directly off to your client. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close out of here and we're gonna go back to our transaction. Now we're gonna wait and we're gonna go ahead and get this transaction signed. So here we're gonna wait for the email to come across. So here's the email that's received to Dave, I'm sorry, to Chris. So he's going to go ahead and click here to access his document. So as always, you have to accept to an e-sign consent. So we're going to click on accept, and then we'll simply click on next. Right here, then it's saying, Chris, let's create your signature, right? And one of the major differences that we have in our sign solution is that we are requiring that the user create a signing password, right? So we're going to plug in a PIN. And the reason for this pin is because of all the fraud and everything that goes on in the industry anymore, uh, a signing password helps us secure that relationship with the signer. So let's just say I'm out and I'm at a public computer or even at a Starbucks and I have my email open. I got up to go grab my a coffee that just got done. And at that point in time, Steve sent me an email to sign a contract. The other services out there, there would be nothing to stop a client from going, sending down, clicking on that link, and going through the signing. Once Chris establishes his signing password, this would prohibit that from ever happening, a person not Chris going through the signing process. So we do feel that it's just that added, that added additional security level that we feel that helps secure you. We're going to choose at that point in time a signature font down here below, or we can go ahead and try to draw our own signature. Your signing experience is going to be the same on either a, a phone, a tablet, and um, the signing experience will be the same, right? So if I want to draw my own, uh, or I can choose any one of the predetermines down here below. So we're going to choose this one over here, and we'll click on On the View Sign.
So what it's done now for us, it's saying, okay, you have two different options. The first option is to let me review. The other option is to simply let me go. The go option is going to actually walk me through the signing. So it'll take me through the signing. I can click on next, and I can initial here. I can sign here. So the system is really just walking me through the signing. And you can see here we have a progress bar. And then once we're done, it's going to say, oh, great, you finished signing. You can either stay here to review or simply click on finish. And we're going to finalize these documents. So we'll give it a second to load. So we can go ahead and review these documents as the client. And you're going to see here that we have the option to review them. We can see where we signed. We can see where we initialed. I can download these. I can print these right after the signs is completed so I can keep them for my own records. The agent is going to receive an email with the sign completed document. Chris is also going to receive an email with a link to the ability to go back into that signing with that pin that he created in case he wants to review those files at a different time. What also happens, though, is back in the transaction, so let's go ahead and refresh the application real quick, is that uh, Steve's going to get an email notification with the signed documents. And then here as well, there's an in-app notification saying, hey, new documents have been signed, which we at that point in time can go directly to the document. And you're going to see there that we've generated a folder with the signed documents already back in the application. I can open them up. I can review them, I can see them, maybe I want to collaborate with someone else, maybe I want to email it out, I can do whatever I need to do. We also include a very detailed audit trail about the signing. This is probably the most secure thing about it is this is a very detailed report. I mean, I just sent it to one person, but look how detailed it is. So again, it's a detailed report of the entire signing process. With the signed documents coming back into the application, again, this makes it a lot easier to get it over into SkySoap when you're ready to pull it over. We also track it in the history section so you can see exactly what's happened during the signing. Uh, another thing about the history section is using the collaboration piece is, you know, with email anymore and there's fraud, you can see when a person has viewed a particular document. So the collaboration keeps a history of what's going on when they're inside that uh, transaction you invited them into. You can also maybe plug in your own notes if you want to as well. Maybe you said call the inspector and you can plug in an own note if you wanted to keep it with this transaction. Okay. So we're going to go on and click on back now. We're going to go back to our transaction page. Another service that we're going to quickly touch base on is some of our partnerships. Um, one of our partnerships is that we do have a partnership with RPR, okay? So RPR is another tool that's provided by the National Association of Realtors, very similar to us. But an agent, anyone who uses RPR, does have the ability to click a drop down here and go to their settings and connect RPR to zip form. So if you're looking to list a property, you can go into the RPR app service and search for a property. And let's go ahead and look at this. Um, to uh, River Road, and we're going to open it up. We can get information about the property. And if we wanted to, we can actually go ahead and create a zip form transaction from here, right? So we can go ahead and create a new zip form transaction, and we'll start a new transaction. It's going to go ahead and push this data into zip form for us, and we can go directly to zip form, and it will take us directly into that transaction. So create, say, your listing residential. It'll pull in some cell information. It'll pull in over some property information as well about the property and even the legal description, the year it was built, the subdivision, and the school district that it falls under. So the RPR integration can help speed up the process on creating listings. You can use it for purchases if you want to as well. You also have the ability here, you have contacts. So you can upload contacts, you can bring in your contacts. So either if you're a location specific, you can actually even go ahead and say, well, this is office contact, and you can create contacts for your agents within your office. You are going to have an administration tab, uh, like a user list. So 
This is where all the agents are going to be shown in the company account. If you're a location admin, which uh, everyone should have received some kind of notification to set a password for their accounts that we set up for you. So everyone, um, you should see those in your email and you can set your passwords to get into your account right away. Um, you'll see here all your agents. You can filter them out by different offices or filter by different roles. And um, this is where you add and move your agents. So from a location perspective, you're going to have the ability to look at only those agents within your office, right? Uh, if you're a brokerage admin, um, so if you're someone like Steve, you're going to have the ability to be in red and you will be able to oversee and look at anything in the entire company that's your right. Uh, location admins, again, you're you know, specific to a particular office location. We have a help function. So we make it very easy for training and education in case you want to learn more. We have live online training. You can also click here to check out our latest training videos. There's the how-to videos from the help section as well. So you can see here introductions and there's the ability for our videos, all the videos that we have out there for you. You can look at training very easily. Even inside the application, which is another cool feature, is say an agent comes in and they're like, yeah, you know what, I, I just need a quick refresher on how to start a transaction. Can you show me? So the system can actually do that for you. So what you can do is click on the help icon here. And you can click on show me how to create a new transaction. And the system is actually going to walk them through that process. So it's going to say step one to click on new, the new button. And they click on next. And step two is going to say, enter a name of your transaction, such as the property address. And it moves along, it tells them. So it's a very simple, with guided process on how to create a new transaction in the application. So anytime you see this gray icon here, either within the transaction, you click on it, it shows you, you know, how to store, set documents, and everything, and even how-to videos in here as well. Under the part, under your profile, you're going to have the ability to update information. Here's where you can set your email signature. So I do encourage that you do that so that you can set your email signature so that it's more personal to you. Um, so at this point in time, I, I, we've gone through and covered everything inside the application. Uh, if you do have questions, please encourage uh, to answer your questions at this time. Um, I will definitely keep a lookout for the chat. And uh, if Steve, you want to add anything else, um, please feel free to come back and, um, you know, if anything you want to add to it. Thank you, Michael. Great job in the uh, overview. Uh, and let me just give a couple of really quick details for since we have both the AAs along with the managers. We're actually rolling out training company-wide on November 30, Wednesday, and on December 1st, Thursday. It's in your packages already, managers, information I'm going through, um, at 10 o'clock. And so we're hoping each office will set up a sales meeting one of those two days or both that you're choosing from 10 to 11 and Mike will go. Th Michael will go through the agent version of what we just saw, and how to how to use the system. We will turn all the agents in the company on live day of your training class. So if you're you know you'll register. If you're going, if you're doing yours on the 30th, we'll turn your group on the 30th. You're doing the first to first. All of you, all the A's and managers, you have been. You're now live. You're ready to go. You know, use that welcome email. You need to go in and change your password and go through that. You can now go in after today's webinar and start playing with, start getting a little comfortable. So you'll have uh, you'll have two weeks in advance of your agents having access to our course. Uh, so I'll go through the rest of it with you in a moment. I want to make sure these AAs don't have your packet, you know, the information in front of you. So open it up for questions. Uh, let me start here around the manager's table. Oh, with Russ Williams. Speak up because this is being recorded. I'm not sure if this is a question. <laughs> Russell asks, how does this inter interact with SkySlope? Uh, SkySlope is, main is, is, uh, is handling our transaction management portion. Logix is going to be our forms platform. So we are going to be shutting down a uh, working document section in, uh, in the forms area in SkySlope 
once we have everybody convert over and everybody's comfortable with it. So our plan, and I'll go through with you after this webinar, is to have a soft launch on the 30th of November and the 1st of December, and then uh, give everybody the month of December to get comfortable with the forms, and then shut down. Because on SkySoap, those are old forms. Like New Jersey has updated their forms. Uh, that's not the most recent forms. Everything you see here is the most recent forms. Uh, DigiSign will still be available, and we'll go through that after the webinar. Yep. Other questions here? Christy Casey. Uh, Michael, why don't you answer a question, Christy Casey, Baskin Ridge. Could you explain the mobile app? Because uh, we will be going through the business rules on that. I'll, I'll discuss that after this webinar with the managers on how we're going to handle the mobile app. Uh, yeah, most definitely. So you have a mobile application. And the mobile application works very similar to our online application. Uh, so anything you're working on or anything that's being developed, you know, worked on during your application, you can work on on the mobile app as well. Uh, so you can see any of the transactions you're working on, you have the ability to go directly into the transaction. Let me go ahead and render it actually what it will look like on like an iPad. So this is what it would operate on an iPad. You can scroll through, you can click on a transaction, you can go into a cover sheet, and you can fill this out. Um, it's very interactive. You can email from here. You can print from here. There's the option to even go back and send it out to eSign from here as well. One of the things that we offer inside our application for the mobile piece is you have the ability to what we call it the in-person signing. I think a lot of companies are now in the point where like they want their agents to be mobile. So what we've done is built in this service called TouchSign. So let's go ahead and say we're going to get like an additional provision um, form signed here. Okay. So we're going to add it in, and we're going to click on Next. And let's go ahead and add a person. And just say, well, we're going to be signing with Dave here. And we're going to go ahead and click on Next. Actually, go back here real quick. We're using Touch Sign. So we're using Dave. And then what's going to happen here is that Dave will have to accept his e-sign consent so he can read through this. So essentially what I'm doing is handing the tablet to the client. They agree. I can see the form here. All I'm going to do is click on Sign. I can tap here to sign. I'm going to take my finger or stylus, and we'll just go here and sign this real quick. We can select it. We can resize it and drag and drop it where it needs to go on our contract. And we can even add in like a date field as well. So we'll click on the date. We can drag and drop, resize it accordingly. And then after you've signed it, all you have to do is click on Done. Oops, I deleted one, sorry. So we'll just sign it here. And then once you're done, all you have to do is click on Done, and you click on OK. So this is if you're at an open house and they want to get a buyer agency signed, there's a listing agreement signed, you can do that immediately. And then the touch sign will give you a packet with the signed contract right back in your, uh, in your file immediately. And then you can go ahead and either split it or send it out through an e-sign or print it or send it out either you know, via... Um, fax or email from the mobile application. But very, very easy to utilize. Thank you, Michael. It is, but you have to register for it. You can't, a we'll talk about that afterwards, okay. yes. That's 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 controlled by the company. Other questions here? Annette DeSico, Livingston. So Annette's asking, just again, since we're being recorded, Annette's asking uh, you know, for agents, uh, you know, how is she going to explain the, the reasons we're going to go through it? I put together a feature benefits, uh, six bullet points, which we'll address right after this uh, webinar to walk you through the reason we've taken this mode. Um, you know, we've gone from, a, we, ha we have an expired site license with the state of New Jersey for NJAR forms, contracts, and other documents. Uh, and we've made the decision that uh, we need a forms company, a company that specializes in this, in this program or manage that process. So uh, the, the benefit to, to them is that it's fully integrated with SkySlope. 
uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be showing a, a video demonstration on how easy it is to pull over the data. It's automatic, uh, and this is where all the forms will exist, and Skyslope will maintain uh, its position as our transaction management portion of the transaction. Uh, and then asks, will the admins need uh, you know, to access to zip forms, or will they just need access to Skyslope? Um, we, we've asked you and the admins to be on this webinar and to be the train the trainers and the eyes and ears in the offices because you're the ones that are dealing day to day with your sales agents that you know typically need help uh, in, in in putting together their transactions. So. Uh, to only have the admins train on the end result, meaning after it's all done in, in Skysoap, we felt was not the way to go. And that's why we're looking for broad acceptance on both platforms, but starting now with, with, with zip forms. Right, let's open it up to uh, all the AAs on the call. Does anybody have any questions you want to ask Mike? This is the time to jump in and uh, ask direct questions. Yeah, I, you can either unmute your own line and um, anyone who had muted you, you can ask questions. There was a question on a cover sheet, so I will read this aloud. It says, uh, this is from Ellen, and if the cover sheet is very extensive, we will need the SS transaction summary and the sales input short form. I see the sales input long form and zip form. I am sure this is something we can work with you, Steve. It's really up to you. And let me also address Ellen's question. One of the benefits, uh, Ellen, I'll be uh, sharing a little bit more details after this webinar, uh, is the uh, is if an agent fills in their transaction and you know, parties and parties information completely, uh, it will all that information will flow throughout all our personal documents uh, as well. And so one of those items is the listing worksheet that's required on the listing and input sheet. We tested already. I no, would say, I'm on a conference call. Yes, you're in a conference call, so you're you're not muted. Whoever just said that. Uh, so the, uh, the the net result is that when you look at the sales input, you know, sales contract input sheet, you'll see that about 85 percent of all the fields have already been completed uh, if you filled out the information. And so the agent working with the AA and the manager, when it comes time to bring in that transaction, you're mostly done. I think. Really appreciate one of those functions out of out, out of zip forms. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Maggie Cook Metuchen asks, "Will it work in reverse?" There is a transaction information worksheet. Uh, it's form number one from the JARS form package. Uh, currently, the way the system is set up, there's a couple fields that will upload from there, it goes both ways. And so as an example, we're working with zip forms to get the attorney fields as well as the parties and transaction. Right now it doesn't exist that way. So this cover sheet you're looking on the screen, if you scroll down, Mike, if you scroll down the attorney section, if you fill in the attorney section on here, those attorney fields will upload back into the transaction, will go into the sales contract input sheet, all the places where you need to fill that in, it will appear. So um, yep. between this and uh, the parties area, they do work back and forth. Yeah, it doesn't need yeah, to build upon that. It really does not matter where they start. Again, when I, I mentioned earlier, there's no right or wrong way. I just feel there's different tools and benefits to do it other ways. But if an agent is comfortable with just filling out a cover sheet or going to a sales contract or a listing contract, data will flow wherever it's needed. Good. Thank you. Any other questions from our um, uh, Frank Torrey, Martinsville has a question. Frank asks, can can you make can you make attorneys a client or a party of the transaction? Yes. Uh, Mike showed you the collaboration uh, function, so you can uh, share documents and, and bring someone into the transaction. Including your home capital network, uh, you know, and associate title, uh, they can all be built together as part of that transaction. So the information flows and is collaborative. Andrew Mensch, West Essex. Will home capital be developed with the contracts 
We'll discuss that afterwards separately. Next question. Oh, okay. Will the unique, will the, you know, the Maggie Cook's question, will the unique email for properties be the same? The answer is no. Skyslope operates as a separate platform. Yep. You coached me well, Mike. Uh, any other questions uh, for our AAs uh, out, out in the field? Any other questions on the chat line, Mike? Uh, not, uh, not on my end, nope. Okay, last call here. Anybody, any other managers? All right, while we still have, we have a few minutes left. Let me just roll through a couple of things that the A's don't have in front of them, so I'll just make sure we're on the same page. Uh, you know, I'll go back to Annette's question, the features and benefits. So if all the managers take out the introduction sheet, uh, you don't have, okay. Uh, oh, I see what you have. So let me, let me walk you through then what's, you know, what, what to expect. Number one feature and benefit is agents complete property and parties information into ZIP. Now I'll follow up and give you a copy of this. So there, it's going to autofill across all platforms and all documents, which is a huge advantage. Because if you remember in SkySlope, the buyer's name had to be put in seven times. You had to fill out a sales contract input sheet, and you had to do a transaction. This is going to auto-populate across all platforms. Second thing. Key differentiate. This should get a you know a uh, amen on this one. Uh, all documents are saved in the zip folder for future changes and updates. As an example, you saw you saw Mike taking everybody through the contract signing. Okay, the seller says I'm not taking the offer. I wanted at five thousand dollars more. All Mike has to do is go back to the unsigned document, the originally filled in. It's already filled out, and then go ahead and change the price. Upload it again right there. Thank you, Mike. Upload it right into uh, Digi Signature. Set it out. Boom, it's done. There's never a question. Where is the document? Did you save it right when you open it? It's not going to be blank. It's, all re it's always going to be saved in your folder here. So we think that's a huge differentiation. Number three is allows direct client signing from forms program before moving to SkySub. So someone can stay in zip do all the client signing. Now, to Russell's question earlier, DigiSign is still going to be available. Uh, SkySlope has templated all these forms now, the new forms, and so that's always an option for your agent to use either platform for signature. I personally believe it's easier doing it all here and then moving it over afterwards, but that's a personal choice that they have. Number four. You know, Michael shared the screen share uh, option, which I think is a tremendous option. Uh, Joyce and I tested this the other day uh, where I brought Joyce in the transaction. She was able to see my whole screen, kind of like we're doing right now uh, you know, in a webinar format, but it's great. An agent could be working any time of the day from wherever they are, and they can co you know, uh, collaborate, and the client can see everything that they see in front of them. Mobile app is going to be available, and, and I'll discuss the business rules right after that, how we're, we're going to use the mobile app. And then last thing, auto, automatic ISO. There's no extra buttons to hit. All the agent has to do is day one, go into SkySlope, enable zip forms, and they're done. And so it's going to work across all platforms. And you saw the forms library in the right. All of our forms are now in the library, all of New Jersey Association of Realtor forms, Garden State Mama, Trend, and, Middle, and New Jersey MLS. Middlesex is coming very shortly. Uh, they require us to sign a license direct with them. I, I talked to the EO yesterday, and we hope to have that, we hope that res to have that resolved, uh, I'd say, before we launch you know, uh, uh, in two weeks. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, uh, our future plan with our forms is to have Keep our forms in SkySlope to the end of the year. Start getting the agents comfortable the next 30 days using the Zip Forms platform, and then move it to here exclusively. So that's the, on January 1st. Yeah, Zip Forms exclusively for completing the forms. Uh, yeah, the documents would only appear here. Yeah, not not there. So that's the plan. The net.
All right, and Annette DeSico asks, can you fill out a contract in zip forms without saving on your computer? Yes, you can, because zip forms is in the cloud. Everything is being kept on their server. You're not keeping, you're not keeping, uh, you know, hard copy files on a, on our server on our computer. You're keeping it on their servers uh, up in uh, Michigan. So that's where that is located. Yep. Yeah, right. we're um. So you could start off in in the office and go home and you know left off. You know, take take off where you left off. So. Yeah. It's a hundred percent transparent mobile. Peter, did you have a question before? We'll we'll talk that offline. Okay. I think uh, any more in the chat? Any more questions uh, from our AAs on this call? Thank you, Ellen. Saying awesome looks great. I thank you, Ellen and Summit. You look great too. You. you look awesome, Ellen. All right, <laughs> I'm I'm going to close this down on R and Mike. Then you can. Uh, you have any final comments? Uh, no, I just thought uh, I really appreciate everyone's time today, and I'm very excited to be working with the Berkshire company on on this rollout. So uh, we will definitely make sure that this is easy and agents will you know get up and running as soon as possible. But again, thank you very much for your time, and Steve, thank you for the opportunity for doing this today. Thank you, Michael. Have a good day. You too.